You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall rock climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. Welcome to Queen's Podcast, where Katie and Nathan are about to spill all the juicy details on yet another incredible queen with a little bit of spicy language, or maybe even a lot of spicy language. Alicia and Stacy here from Trashy Royals, the podcast all about naughty nobles and our betters behaving badly. We wanted to let you know about the very real possibility of strong language in the following episode. Proceed as you wish. Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queen's Podcast, the show about women in history. Hey, Katie. Oh my gosh, Nathan. How are you? Pretty good. It's been a nice little calming week. I got to spend the weekend doing a whole lot of nothing, which is Love this always for you. wonderful. Love this for <laughs> you. So, Nathan, today, who are we talking about? We are talking about Princess Nest. Yes, also known as Nest Furch Riss. She's been described in history as the Helen of Troy of Wales. And also, I want to give a ah. shout out to our friend Claire, who is a Welsh history like blogger and creator on Instagram. You can find Claire's Instagram handle in the show notes, but Claire is actually from Wales, and she helped us out a lot with the pronunciations. But Nathan, are we still going to get the pronunciations perfect? Oh, I guarantee absolutely. <laughs> if you've never seen Welsh written down before. Google it. Google it. <sighs> So my husband went to college in Wales and one of his one of our good friends is Welsh. And the very first time we met, she decided it would we'd had a couple of drinks and she decided it would be fun to just show a Texan Welsh words and try to get me to pronounce it. And she has never laughed so hard. So (laughs) still to this day. Also up top, I think we should say that she's a figure that we don't have a lot of concrete evidence about. So Mm -hmm. a lot of this is going to be from conjecture, but I still think it's a fun story. So No facts, just vibes. No Um, facts, just vibes, (laughs) because none of the facts exist. Where's Tandy when you need her? I know! (laughs) uh, BT Dub's resident psychic, Tandy underscore Gutierrez on Instagram. She also has unit unicornwellnessstudio.com yeah. she is an excellent channel and this would be something that you're like hey please help because we have no facts oh, on here oh my we goodness need some vibes. we need some vibes i was actually <laughs> texting with her two days ago she's gonna be on the show in august again oh yeah and so if you're interested in listening to those old episodes she has done two psychic readings for us about historical mysteries and princess nest would be a good one yeah because we don't know a lot of about them so it might be something fun to maybe put figure out which women that we don't have a lot of history on to do a reading on that especially with somebody like princess nest where there's so much discourse about her activity in this but anyway yep before we get into the story, Nathan, I think we have some Patreon shout outs. Of course we do. So shout outs to Serena, Meg, Melissa, and Courtney. And shout outs for to Maureen, Meg, and Cal. Oh, we had two Megs just join. Welcome to the oh, Meg hey, Society. Meg Meg. Meg, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Meg squared. So today what we're going to be drinking... It's actually a really pretty cocktail to I make. posted it on Instagram already because I was like, I can't wait to share this. This is so pretty. Yes. So essentially what it is is an ounce and a half of dark rum, ounce and a half of light rum, an ounce of orange juice, an ounce of pineapple juice. And then I took an ounce of gray tea that I had brewed like with Earl some Grey? lavender. 
Yeah, Earl Grey tea with some lavender to give it a little bitterness. So mix that all together. I actually squeeze a little bit of lime in there. Didn't show that in the video, but you should squeeze a little lime in there. And then pour it into a glass. And then what I did was is I took a, a sliced pineapple, baked it in the oven so that it got a little brown and black. So it looked okay, like it's an... fancy over here. Yeah. And that way, whenever I placed it on top of the cup, it kind of floats like a nest. Ah, ah, princess nest. Princess nest. So we made a nest cocktail because it's pretty. It's just very pretty. Like it's very. I even pretty. like took a little clump of lavender flowers and put it in the middle of the pineapple to make it look colorful. Ooh. And, ooh, it looks it looks really good. And honestly, this is a really good drink if you were to have a big party. Yeah. To have like a rum punch sort of situation. Oh. And, yeah. Everybody would love that. Yeah. And it's a very, make you look a little upscale when you put lavender and tea lavender. and all this stuff in it. Mm. <laughs> well, this is a beautiful cocktail. Cheers, Nathan. Cheers. All right. So let's get into the life of Princess Nest. She, first of all, the name back then in Welsh, it was like the equivalent of the English name Agnes. Ah. Yeah. And she was born... Eh, maybe 1085, we think. Okay, okay. So 900 years before some other real cool people would be born. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She was born in Wales, and her father was king, a king of a district. His name was Rhys Ap Tudor. <laughs> he was king of De Highbarth, which was a district in Wales, in southern Wales. Now, we haven't been to 11th century Wales on this show before. We've been to, like, 11th century England. England. France. Yeah. We've been all but over the place. Wales. No. Mm -hmm. So let's take a little bit of time to get to know a little bit about the lay of the land. Okay. First off, let's talk names, because the naming conventions of Welsh people at the time was different than what we know now. For sure. So our girl's full name is Nest Ver Reese, which means Nest, daughter of Reese. Yeah. And her dad is Reese Ap Tudor, which means Reese, son of Tudor. Yeah, so they didn't have, like, surnames like mm -hmm. we have now until, spoiler alert, the English take them over, basically. So. <laughs> also, we need to discuss the setup of Wales at the time. Yes. Because it was a bunch of like small kingdoms more or less ran independently from each other. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're all often at war with each other <laughs> or at war with the Vikings. But who wasn't at who war? Who wasn't with at the war with the Vikings yeah. in the 11th century? Oh, my goodness. Everyone was. Everybody was. It was It was a mess. It was a mess. Um, <laughs> yes. So now we're going to see some overlap with some other episodes that we've had. So, hey, if you want to check out some of Queen's back catalog that relates to this episode, you might be interested in we're going to talk about William the Conqueror. We covered his wife mm -hmm. and then we're going to talk about Henry the first and we covered his daughter in 1066. This little known guy, inconsequential guy from history known as William the Conqueror, he uh -huh. rolls up into England from Normandy. Is Wait. he going to conquer some shit? Why would you say that? Who can tell? <laughs> 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 we also talked about, yeah, we talked about his wife, Matilda of Flanders, way, way back, like in season two or something. And yeah, so William the Conqueror rolls in and he does a conquering. But... In case you've never listened to those episodes, what you need to know from here is these folks came from Normandy and took over England and nearly genocided all of the Anglo-Saxons. It was a and lot. Yes, it was geno genocided. genocided. Is it yeah, is a proper use of that word? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Needless to say, it was a rough time for the Anglo-Saxons. It was a bad time for anybody living in England that wasn't French. Yes. Yeah. However, when William first came over from Normandy, he was more or less too busy to worry about Wales. Basically, before Nest was born, her dad got the chance to pay off 
William the Conqueror, which I went down a weird rabbit hole about like, they didn't really, besides the kings and Wales, they didn't really have money like the Normans were used to because it was much more of like a trade and barter society. So for her dad to get up enough money to pay off William the Conqueror, he probably did some shady shit, but whatever. And so he just paid off William the Conqueror and William the Conqueror was like, fine, my hands are full. I'm killing all the Anglo-Saxons. So the first few years of Ness's life would have been relatively chill. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, relatively chill, not a lot going on. And speaking of her early years, what were they like? You know, by the time Nest hit the scene, her dad had fought off a ton of different contenders for Mm -hmm. his land, but he was pretty well settled. Yeah. Got married, had three kids. That we know of. He she at Uh, least had two brothers. Like her dad probably had kids from relationships before he got married that she may have been raised with. But we know for sure that she had two brothers with, like, full brothers Mm -hmm. named Griffith and Howell and maybe a sister. But that's unclear because they only wrote down the boys. Surprise. Surprise. Not not surprise. Surprise, surprise. Uh, (laughs) We don't know a whole lot about her mom except that her name was Gladys. And she was the daughter of another king in the area. She was quite a bit younger than her husband and they were likely married as part of an alliance among the kings of wales right we're about to do a lot of assuming so this probably you're gonna have to get used to it because it's coming up a lot in this episode because like we said it wasn't really well documented this is a time in life where it's like why would somebody write things down about a girl, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we assume oh. she was raised and educated mainly by her mother, along with her brothers. And we aren't 100% sure if she would have been taught to read, because yeah. the only kids we know for sure that were taught to read were people that were monks or priests. And that ain't her girl. Obviously. She's a mistress. <laughs> Obviously not. So, yeah, we don't know for sure what her education would have been like, but we know it probably didn't include a bunch of languages because the daughters of the kings of Wales, like we see a lot where you marry your daughter into like Catherine of Aragon, for instance, marry a Spanish princess into the English royal family for alliance. Wales was so fighting amongst themselves that they just married the Welsh princesses into other Welsh families. So she wouldn't have been taught to speak other languages at Mm. all. She only spoke Welsh. And it's very unlikely that she would have learned anything about any of the other cultures. Maybe a little bit about the the Viking cultures, like Swedish Mm. or something, because... They were always around fucking shit up. But she wouldn't have known anything about England, France. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, she wouldn't have. She would have been kind of in the dark about that. Yeah. Um, And due to Welsh customs at the time, we have to assume that this is the path she thought her life would follow. Of course. She'd marry a guy from another powerful family in Wales. They'd have kids. She'd maybe go with him when he was trying to raise troops for some battle or something. But she'd raise her kids, host parties here and there, go to church, you know, hang out with the king's wives. Um, That was not how her life was going to go. Narrator voice. (laughs) She was mistaken. (laughs) Okay. So before we get into the rest of this, I, I just have to top off this beautiful cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. So we will be right back. I'm Jane Perlez, longtime foreign correspondent and former Beijing bureau chief for The New York Times. I've been a foreign correspondent in lots of places, Somalia, Indonesia, Pakistan, but nowhere as important to the world as China. I mean, China is not dropping anti-democratic paratroopers into Montana. But of course, we did see things like the weather balloon slash spy balloon riveting the whole country for a week. This is Face Off, an eight-part series in which we'll take you behind the scenes to key moments in the tumultuous U.S.-China relationship. 
we'll speak with a diplomat, a spy, a tech reporter, a U.S. admiral, even Yo-Yo Ma. Plus, my pal and noted China historian Rana Mitter joins the conversation. We'll look at what's driving the two nations apart and explore whether anything can help bring them back together. Face-off launches April 9th. I'm Helena Bonham Carter, and for BBC Radio 4, this is History's Secret Heroes, a new series of rarely heard tales from World War II. They had no idea that she was Britain's top female codebreaker. We'll hear of daring risk-takers. What she was offering to do was to ski in over the high Carpathian mountains. Of course it was dangerous, but uh, danger was his friend. Subscribe to History's Secret Heroes wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back. Yes. So things changed considerably for Nest and her family when she was about five years old. Yeah. So William the Conqueror had died, and now his son, William II, on the throne. Yeah, and William II, he goes down in history known as William Rufus. He's not a popular king. And Rufus meant redhead. Uh Uh-uh. He looks at whales, and he's like, Okay, my dad let all these kings and stuff pay him off and just kind of left them alone. And he's like, yeah, that's not that's not the approach I'm going to take, like, at all. No, not at all. (laughs) And William Rufus thought the best way to get people to stay loyal to him is to build more castles and give them to his friends. But. They were starting to run out of land to build them in England. And after they moved into Wales, they were like, well, they already have a shitload of castles here. (laughs) So Rufus and his friends decided to just run out the people already living in the castles like, hey, mine now. (laughs) Which started a very long history of England being dickheads to Everybody else on their island collective, yes. Unfortunately for Nest, her family, they were living in one of those castles that William Rufus decided he uh. needed. And her dad went to went to battle. He went to fight for his lands. And this dude, we're not really going to go into it in this episode, but this dude spent so much of his life either preparing for battle or being in battle. So Nest was probably not stressed, Nest not stressed, about her dad going to war because he did it all the fucking time. But uh, maybe she should have been a little bit. Bless her. Yeah. In 1093, Nest's dad, Reese, was killed in battle. And pretty much immediately, her family's life is completely turned upside down. She would have been around eight years old, so sweet baby Nest. Sweet Sweet baby baby Nest. Nest. How fucking scary. Because not only is her dad Mm -hmm. dead, but, well, first of all, she probably viewed her dad as, like, this invincible figure because he's Mm -hmm. been to war her whole life. And so she's thinking, no one can kill my dad. He's, but, uh, he is mortal, (laughs) just like the rest of us. And now... The castle that she grew up in is overtaken by these Norman assholes. And they're speaking French, which she does not know a lick of, you know. (sighs) And her mom is scared and her dad is dead and she's eight. Nathan, can you imagine? Uh, Put yourself uh, in her shoes. Like, can you imagine? mm -mm, Not mm -mm. into it. Nest. Nest was stressed. Nest was stressed. Uh, So her brother Griffin, who was even younger than she was, was taken into hiding in Ireland. So I guess they were killing baby boys. Um, Yeah. I mean, if they took mm -hmm. him and not her, I have to assume that his life was a danger and her life. Yeah. Yeah. And imagine explaining that to your young daughter. Like, your baby brother is fleeing the country so that these weird guys don't, don't kill, kill him. him? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure she, Ness was stressed. I'm sure Ness was very 
stressed. The hashtag <laughs> mess with stressed. Yes. But luckily, it wasn't the case that they, like, she didn't have to worry about being killed herself. They didn't kill daughters because daughters could become commodity later. You know what I mean? Yay. I love this. Yay. So she was taken hostage by the Norman invaders when she was about eight years old, nine years old. And probably, question mark, <laughs> taken to England. Probably. Yeah, maybe. Error. Maybe. Um, not totally sure where she was taken, but she was removed from the place where she grew up. Yeah. It seems like her mom and younger brother were taken hostage too, and they may have been taken together. Again, unclear, unclear. but for her sake, OMG, I hope so. I hope so. And then for about five or six years, we just simply don't know what was going on with nest hopefully she was less stressed mm -hmm. <laughs> one theory is that they put her into a norman run convent in england mm -hmm. and so she would have like continued her education she would have learned french because again then when the after the norman invasion everyone in the royal courts spoke french not english they didn't start speaking english in royal courts until like the 1500s 1400s something like that we think maybe she was taken in and given that kind of education they may have also been put in the house of some other higher ranking family in england yeah but they almost certainly would have been treated well they would have been fed, clothed, the kids would have been educated, you know, that would have all been serious to them. Yeah. Because King William was going to make sure that Nest was a good marriage option for some Norman noble one day. Yeah, because history's a bag of dicks. And he was going to marry her to one of the dudes whose family was given castles in Wales. So, you know, to, to try to just, you know, deter her any future uprisings exactly basically. they're just like his thinking is let's raise her marry her to a norman dude living in wales and then hopefully the welsh people would be less pissed off yes yeah. exactly so time passes with ness just existing question mark for a while <laughs> uh, but she resurfaces in the court of william rufus and she's about 16. And guess what? She is a smoke show. She is hot. Ooh. We don't know a whole oh. lot about Nest herself, besides what the chroniclers have decided to tell us. And what they've decided to tell us is that she was hot. Because, again, <laughs> history is a bag of dicks. Yep. That's all, that's all she is. She's just she's hot. Just hot. She's, she, she was just, who cares? She's fucking um, hot. The sources on Nest are murky and... Often things are confused due to translations and lost records. But there's one thing that didn't get lost in translation. Dead ass. Dead ass. Dead ass. Dem titties and that ass. Dead ass. Yes. Dead ass. She... Dem titties and that ass. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, don't mm. don't mm. apologize mm. for that. I love this. <laughs> I love this for us. Um, she was a sexy, sexy lady. And everyone who met her fell in love with her. Yeah. Um, including the king's little brother, this guy named Henry. Okay, here's someone we've met on the show before. This is Henry I of England, Empress Matilda's dad. Um, mm -hmm. And he had something like 21 illegitimate children. Ooh. I know, he was a ladies' man. Brown chicken, brown girl. <laughs> and he took one look at Nest and he went, mm hmm, yep, yep, we'll subscribe. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, Henry was like 19 years older than Nest, but, but, and his oldest child was likely going to be older than her. But at that time, that's not a big deal. They kind of looked the other way. But soon after arriving at court, she became the mistress to the king's brother. All right. So let's pull up to the speculation station. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Nest would have probably had some kind of guardian at court. They wouldn't have just thrown her in, you know? Mm hmm So when the king's brother starts showing interest in her, like, I have a feeling somebody probably, what do you think? Don't you think somebody was probably like, hey, girl. 
be the king's the king's brother's mistress, have a kid with the king's brother, and you're set for life, don't you think? Yeah, that kind of feels like there are worse things in the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> and also, we have to remember, um, the culture was different around quote unquote illegitimate children back then, because William the Conqueror himself was a quote unquote illegitimate kid. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't frowned upon like it was back uh, later on. Uh, I mean, it's better to be to inherit yes. titles, but also it, there wasn't the there wasn't the stigma around being the mother of an illegitimate child at that time. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have no idea about how Nest felt about this, but it was a strategic way to get ahead. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you know, if she did use it as a money move, I'm not mad about it, you know? Give some head to get ahead? Give some <laughs> 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 and this that. is why we have an explicit rating, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1103, when Ness would have been about 18, she gave birth to a baby boy they named Henry Fitroy. By 1103, Henry has become king and has married Matilda of Scotland. Who we've talked about on Patreon. Yes, we have. And he decides that it's time for Ness to serve her purpose as bride to one of his friends in Wales. Because, you know, that's what women are in the culture. No, bargaining money. chips, prizes. Yay, you're like the prized cow. Congratulations. Being a woman is great. Super good time. <laughs> Very nice. So there was this guy named Gerald of Windsor, or Gerald de Windsor, who had been, like, he'd been looking after this castle called Pembroke Castle for a while, and he's doing a good job. So in Pembroke Castle, there's a whole bunch of corgis, I like to imagine, right? Because I'm the Pembroke co- yes, corgis, isn't yes. that a thing? <laughs> so <laughs> Nest and her son are sent back to Wales, and she is going to marry this Gerald dude that she does not know. Oof, oof. But side note, Windsor, Tudor, we have those names in this Welsh I stuff. Know. That's crazy. I asked Claire, like, is the Tudor in this one related to the Tudors from later? And she said no. That's crazy. I know. That they had families, the Windsors and the Tudors, just yeah, like we kind of had. I agree. Anyway. anyway. Let's roll back up to some speculation station. I wonder if it all felt like whiplash going from Wales to England, back to Wales. Like, ah, yeah. but now she's in Wales. But everyone is speaking French and all the castles have been redone and lots of laws have changed. So every Thing is just different. So let's discuss. Do you think she's happy to be back home? Or do you think she's like, I mean, she's been gone for 10 years. Do you think she's like? Yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't feel like it was home. Yeah. Because spoiler, like whenever I think um we had a hurricane whenever we were growing up and we had to like leave for evacuate for like six three weeks. months or six yeah like six weeks it was something crazy and then whenever you went back into your hometown and everything just looks different yeah. because of what happened it doesn't feel like home anymore totally. like it feels it feels completely different it's like wait this is not what i was i remember totally if that makes sense absolutely and also it's like um people around here aren't my people like because like the mm-hmm. castle that she moved into when she went to marry this dude was a castle that had been owned by her dad so it's one that she would have grown up in but could you imagine moving back into the house that you grew up in but everybody there is speaking a different language and you know they're all responsible for the death of your dad but mm-hmm. she's been raised with these people for the last 10 years they're, we're never going to relate to what she's experiencing right now but I don't know Maybe she's happy to be back home, or at least like the people around the block speak Welsh, and that's her native language. So we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Whatever she felt, we do know one thing, that the people there were happy to have her back. Yeah. She's like and a figurehead. Yeah. So like, oh, my God, Ness. And she's like, oh, my God, who who are you? You! Um, <laughs> they... 
her husband would have been happy to have her because she's bringing him legitimacy to be in her father's old lands. Oh, and because she's hot as fucking hell. Oh, so he like he took one look at her and he was like, "Yep, smash." Yeah, uh-huh. smash. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that helps. That helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. All right, let's talk about their marriage. Was it happy? Mer? We <laughs> we know he's quite a bit older than her. He's probably about the same age as her last boyfriend. So like okay. about 20 years older than her. So we don't love that, but also she would have been used to it. You know? Mm-hmm. Also, they had five kids together. So it couldn't have been that. It couldn't have been that unhappy. You know? Right? They could, like, maybe average Average? And there's no, even though we wouldn't hear about just, like, regular unhappy marriages, there would be reports if, like, a wife complained about her husband being, like, unkind to her. Yeah. Because she would have had political pull. Yeah, for sure. And there's no reports at all of him being unkind to her. So, I mean, the bar is in hell. But, yeah, that's, that's... That's good. Good. Um, Push mark. <laughs> now, let's fast forward just a little bit. <laughs> and we're going to get to the part that Nest is most famous for. Mm-hmm. And it's the reason why she's called the Welsh Helen of Troy. And this is this story is why we actually know about her because Lots of trauma. Ooh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So, new character alert. Owain Ap Cadugan. Nailed it. God bless me. I hope that's... I, so, Owain is Nest's second cousin from, like, the Welsh okay. family. Sometime in 1109, so Nest is about 24 or so, she meets Owain, her second cousin. And there are a couple of different reports on how they met. One is that just, like, he heard that she was beautiful, so, like, he kind of, like, got himself an invite into a party. Um, another theory is that Owain's dad was throwing this big party, like maybe around Christmas time or something with like jousting and feasting and stuff. Nest would have been invited to that because she is of Welsh nobility, you know? Alternatively, there's a story where Owain heard that Nest was beautiful. So he just kind of shows up to a Christmas celebration. <laughs> Nest and, and her throwing. husband are having. <laughs> I know. It's kind of weird. Like, hey, cousin, you know, <laughs> just in the neighborhood. I was just to stop it. And I heard you were hot. And well, because family relations would have been a big fucking deal back then. So like if your second cousin shows up, even if you don't know them, you kind of have to let them in. So, yeah, 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 but they do meet, and Owain falls in love hard with Nest. Yeah, so, and this is where the story gets murky. Was Nest in love with Owain? <sighs> we, I mean, we just don't know. There's been several ways this story has been told. One is that she fell back in love with him because they would have been, like, the same age. They both would have been Welsh. They would have had a similar upbringing. And so maybe they bonded. Maybe they fell in love. That's not unreasonable, you know? Yeah. So, all guesses. But what we do know is that some traumatic shit is about to go down. So let's take a quick break to brace ourselves. And then when we come back, we'll tell you all about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. Oh, um, hey. Trigger warning. Yeah. Uh, this section of the story may contain some sexual assault. So if that's not something you want to hear right now, we completely respect that. Check out the timestamps, please. Yes. yes. Okay. You ready for the drama, Nathan? I love me a good drama story. I live for the drama, even when it has some trauma, unfortunately. So after Owain Drama trauma. Drama trauma. Uh, (laughs) So after Owain (laughs) and Nest initially meet, he is smitten kitten. Because as we've already Mm -hmm. discussed, that asked him titties, you know? She's beautiful. And we have no idea how she feels in response. 
No. Yeah. Something we should mention is that Owain's dad is considered a rebel. Mm -hmm. Yes, they they would have let him into their home for Christmas because technically he's family he's with Ness. family. Nest. Yeah, but on a day to day, Owain and his dad were not considered friends. Which honestly, if the two are having a romance, it kind of makes it even a little bit hotter. hotter. Hello, uh, like you're I a know. rebel. My husband hates you. Mm. Mm, let's bone. <laughs> One night, Ness and her husband and their kids, because uh, her husband, Gerald, built several castles, but they're staying in Carew Castle, which, Nathan, I want you to click on this link. I can I include see. it. I see. It's beautiful. Oh, look at that. Yes. Beautiful, wow. beautiful Carew Castle. And um, so it's one of the more impressive castles that Gerald built. But apparently... I'm going to say he fucking skimped on the security system because one <laughs> he night didn't get while there's. ADT. No, no, he ADT. could not put up that mm -hmm. little like thing in his front yard that says like ADT protected. Um, no, because one <laughs> night they're sleeping and a Wayne and a bunch of his friends scale the walls and just start Ooh. raiding the castle. How did they not like have a security guard with like. <sighs> what? I need more information. Anyway. They were they were naive back then. Mm. Um, Nest and her husband wake up, realize what's going on, and Nest helps Gerald escape through the... So Gerald escapes through the latrine shaft, which is a hole in the wall attached to Ye old Dusty's castle. Basically, it's it's in the toilets, so he It's literally the shithole. Shit it's literally yeah. the shithole. You know what it made me think of in Shawshank Redemption? You know when Andy's like oh, crawling through yes. the sewer, through all the shit? Gerald is Shawshank and Redemptioning out of there. Shawshank, Shawshank and Redemption. Redemption. <laughs> yeah. He is pulling an Andy from Shawshank. Say that five Absolutely. times fast. Shawshank nope. Redemption. Couldn't running. if my life depended <laughs> on it. <laughs> I have a couple of questions here, and we can pull up to Speculation Station again and discuss it if you want. But, like, why was this guy so okay? Okay, so Nest is like, our enemies are at the door. Get the fuck out of here. Why is he so okay with leaving his wife and his kids to the intruders? So maybe, maybe he doesn't think that they're after them and they're just after him? Maybe he thinks, um, like, surely they wouldn't hurt an unarmed woman and children and children and that that's my first thought is that he's like oh someone's scaling the walls of the castle they're after me not you guys so let me go escape but it could also be a little bit of misogyny of like eh hey, y'all don't matter it's it's just me that matters so well, I'm but the he one would but he escape. would fucking care about his sons right yeah brings me to why was nest so eager to get him to Shawshank Redemption. Hmm. Hmm. Again, we don't. She may have also been like, "Well, they're not going to hurt us. We're just unarmed women and children. They're not going to hurt us." Or, if you want to go with a more romantic version of the story, you could be like, "She wanted to get him out of the picture." Yeah, he. She wanted to get him out of the picture because she was in love with Owain. Question right? mark. No. <laughs> So when Owain finds Ness, he maybe rapes her? They definitely have intercourse. Whether she wanted it or not is up for question. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, this is one of those things that can get really sticky when you talk about it. Because to me, personally... I have to throw up a red flag. Yeah. This is the same Helen of Troy. It's the same story. Yeah. It's the same story. Did this woman want to be kidnapped? So we don't know. There's so many versions of the story, and some of them are saying that she's a victim, and some of them are saying that she's a willing participant. Will we ever know the answer? No, we're not. No. no. And likely there's it's somewhere in between. Where she probably Maybe, wasn't, yeah. but was at some like it's sticky situation. I, yes, and also like I mean, in my mind, Owain is hot, and she's married to an old man, so maybe. But also, we don't. We at uh, uh, the end of the day, 
We don't fucking know. Whatever went down, Owain took Nest and her two oldest kids with Gerald, William and Maurice, and looted the hell out of the castle. Oof. Like, stole shit, burnt shit, and then they bounced. What the fuck was Gerald doing? Was he just, like, sitting in, like, the sewage being scared? Like, this has lowered <laughs> my opinion of Gerald if he's just letting his wife be in his mind, raped and kidnapped, you know? Yeah, it doesn't sound, it sounds weird. It uh, sounds, yeah, yeah. Mm. Could he not, I don't know. I have several follow-up questions for um, Sewage Gerald. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. we can ask Tandy later. We can ask um, Tandy later. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the next morning, after Gerald got himself out of the gutter. I guess. Well, that's when the shit really hit the fan. Ha, ha. Ba, 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 ba. Yes. <laughs> First of all, news had already gotten to Owain's dad, who is a powerful Welsh guy, like of Welsh origins, still like having power in Wales. And so Owain's dad, Cadugan, was pissed. He mm -hmm. was like, you fucking idiot. Which, again, this reminds me so much of the Helena Troy story, because wasn't it the same deal with Paris's dad, the king, being like, yep. please tell me you did not just kidnap a queen of, like, enemy territory. Please tell me you did not just do this. And Owain's like, okay, but if I had, <laughs> 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 would that really be a bad thing? And Cadogan is like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And so Gerald's dudes are rocking up to Cadogan's house ready for a fight. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm on your side this time. This wasn't me. I this is my dumbass son. Uh -huh. I, I had nothing to do with this. He's an idiot. I'll, I'll even help you find him <laughs> because and he's such an idiot. Yes. And meanwhile, someone has written to King Henry Remember, this is his ex-mistress that he has a child with. Mm -hmm. And they're like, someone has kidnapped Nest, and we don't know where she is, and she's maybe been raped. And he is like, because remember, Henry I was not a perfect man, but he recognized all of his Ill quote-unquote illegitimate children, and he loved, maybe not romantically, but he still loved all the mothers and took care of them as well. And so he took this as a disrespect to himself. And he's he's king now, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So he's sending out a nest rescue mission. A, a nest rescue mission. I love yes. that. Yes. <laughs> but then the, the Welsh were like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're getting awfully aggressive over something that the majority of us had nothing to do with. Yeah. So TLDR, there's fighting with the Normans. The Welsh are fighting with each other. It's basically a civil war. Yeah. When I first heard that Nest was the Welsh Helen of Troy, I was like, well, what does that mean? And the more I got into the story, I was like, oh. It's quite literally, quite literally, they're fighting over a woman. Yes. That maybe didn't want to even be in that situation to begin with. Yup. So where is Nest? And what does she think about the whole thing? Again, it's so fucking frustrating. We just uh -huh. don't know. We do know if she had been in on the whole thing. She was not expecting him to kidnap her kids. Mm -hmm. There's like something from a chronicler that says that she's like, if you want me to be faithful to you, send my kids back to their father. And so he does, which I don't know. That, that what, what do you think about that? <sighs> if he does send the kids back to their father, it makes me think it's not a hostage situation for money. No, because obviously. It's not. His eldest sons, I know it sucks, but historically, eldest sons were more hot property than wives. So why send the kids back? That is a weird... Maybe she was a little... I don't know. What do you think? <sighs> I. It's so uh, hard. It's so hard, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. Like, I feel like she had to have been not 100% into it at, at some point. But it feels like if, if she was being held 100% for political reasons, he wouldn't have sent the kids back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> we'll never know. It's so frustrating. 
Study I history, know. they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> but she stayed with Owain for a while. How long she stayed? Yeah. Still kind of unclear. Could have been a couple months. Could have been up to two years. Who knows? Yeah. And how willing she was. Again, completely unclear. But, you know, it, again, if you're familiar with the story of Helen and Troy, you can see why up to this point she's called the Welsh Helen. Mm -hmm. Men are fighting over her. But is it really over her? Or is it because they wanted to fight anyway? And here's a convenient reason to fight. Mm -hmm. Blame it on a woman. Blame it on Yay. a woman. It's all her fault. What? If she wasn't so she wasn't so pretty. If she wasn't so sexy. It's her fault for looking so pretty Don't all the time. Titties. Uh, so I wish we could give you some resolution here. But nope. Nope. Um, sometimes we don't like this. We're not going to give you all the answers that you want because we just don't know them. And eventually, Owain and his dad realize, hey, it's not safe for them to be in Wales anymore. So they hightail it to Ireland, and Nest was left behind. Was she relieved? Was she heartbroken? The world may never know. No, like, we have no idea. But yeah, so dude hightailed it back. She was left in Wales, and so she just went back to her husband. And we just don't know. Was she happy to go back? Was she relieved? Or was it like, oh, my God, my lover just left me? What? Hmm. Hmm. There's a version of this story where Ness had a son with Owain because he does have an illegitimate son by another unknown mother that his family raised for him. So maybe that was Ness' son. The unknown mother, she may have been that one. I mean, she wouldn't have taken that baby back to her, her husband's castle. Uh, no, absolutely not. No. She, yeah. Most historians believe, though, that Wayne would have wanted everyone to know that was Ness's kid. So for like we the don't validity, really know. for yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like if it was Ness's kid, his family, his family it. would have been like, yeah, this is Ness's kid, instead of just being like, oh, it's some unnamed mother. Yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, though, um, Ness just fucking dusts her shoulders off and goes back to her husband and life returns to normal. Nathan, how could it possibly just go back to normal? No, that... there's no way. There's <sighs> war going on. Like, there's all sorts of issues. But I, I just, I don't, I wish we knew more is what I'm getting at. I know. Eventually. So, Owain... Flew to flew to Ireland. He after like a year, Henry the first like emails him and is like, "Hey, I really need some people. I need, I need some boots on the ground back in Wales." And he comes back, <laughs> and Gerald, against Henry's wishes, shoots him, kills him. <laughs> so Gerald wow. is apparently mad, still big mad. He still took that shit personally. Wow. How satisfying for Gerald, though. I know, right? He he gets to kill yeah. the yeah. dude that maybe raped his wife. Or maybe Eddie just Kay. or maybe just had sex with his wife. <sighs> Gerald did end up dying a few years later, yeah. probably in like eleven sixteen. So he would have been fifty ish and she would have been thirty ish. So she's a pretty young widow. Yeah. And she's rich, bitch. She is so <laughs> rich. We've talked about on the show pretty much the only time that women historically had autonomy is when they are rich widows. Uh-huh. And there's all kinds of rumors of what Ness did with her widowhood. For instance, we know she had at least one love affair after her husband's mm. death. He was the sheriff of Pembroke, a guy named William, which was incredibly so scandalous, scandalous, and we love to hear it. We love a scandalous bitch. This girl, to me, kind of seems like, what, I fuck kings, I fuck sheriffs, I'm gonna do what makes me happy. I do what happy. I fucking want. However, since she is still young, and still of, like, childbearing ages, um, and because the King of England and her sons have control over her life because history is a is a what Nathan what do, what do all those historians um, say history is a what a bag of dicks a bag of dicks yes history is a bag <laughs> of dicks so her sons force her into another marriage 
but it seems like it was maybe happy question mark he was the constable for the city of cardigan so everybody was real cozy in their little sweaters and they had <laughs> and they had another child together so she's had like eight kids no, oh, and it feels like every time she gets married to a man, they're like, maybe she was happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all women until like I know it's like eh, we don't we don't uh, really know. Uh, but either way, she's a fertile myrtle bitch. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's kind of where the story ends. Yeah. So she maybe died in about eleven thirty five at the age of fifty. Yeah. But. We just got nothing on the last 20 years of her life at all. Honestly, Nest had probably around like seven or eight kids. So she's got a lineage, though, because her Uh family married into the Norman culture, the Anglo-Saxons, the Irish, everything, Mm -hmm. the French. And um, one of her grandsons is this guy named Gerald of Wales, And if you're at all interested in Welsh history, you're going to hear that name over and over and over and over because he is like the first historian of Wales ever. I know. I think that's pretty cool. We love that. Maybe he was like, I saw what happened to my mom and nobody documented it. So maybe I should. Maybe I should. My grandma. Grandma. Yeah. Maybe I should tell people. Maybe I should document it. Yeah. Like, maybe that was one of the driving forces. Uh, No facts, just vibes. No facts, just vibes. So, uh, (laughs) also, her kids married into the Irish noble families, and today the current Duke of Leinster in Ireland is a descendant of hers. So, she has living family members all over England, Wales, Ireland, and probably even France. Uh, BT Dubs. Fun fact. She also, yes. Katie, you take this one away because you're the one that discovered it. It's believed that the president JFK, the United States president JFK, is a descendant of hers because I love that. His mom, so the F, his middle name, F stands for Fitzgerald. And that oh, that is Gerald. the surname her first husband would have. All her kids would have had was Fitzgerald. Yeah. Oh, and so, so it's believed oh. on his mom's side, JFK is descendant from Princess Nest. We aren't sure where she was buried, but we believe Karoo Castle, you know, where she was kidnapped from. Mm-hmm. And they say that she still haunts that castle to this day. Love this for her. So even though the story was left with a bunch of question marks, I still had a lot of fun telling it. What about you, Nathan? Me too. Like, again, we had some facts, mostly vibes. Mostly vibes. <laughs> it's, sometimes that's what we get whenever we roll the dice with some of these women is, unfortunately, you're kind of bound to yeah. the patriarchal way of describing history. Totally. So we don't really know how she- she felt, and we don't know if she was actually kidnapped or not. <laughs> but super fascinating. So I understand why people will compare her to Helen of Troy. Oh, like, yeah. Because it just makes sense. For sure. Well, let's raise a glass to Nest. Cheers, Cheers. bitches. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Nathan. Bye. Bye.